You're the Democrats. What are you going to do for the next two years? How do therapy? you regroup? Therapy. <laughs> we're all going to therapy. Uh, why, why are we here? There's nothing. If, if you're a Democrat, all we can say is we hope that Susie decides that she's going to take a long vacation, that they hire some terrible people and make some mistakes to give us a chance. Right now, they have everything. They got the Supreme Court. They got the Electoral College. They got the House. They got probably they got the Senate. They got the popular vote. And we're just sitting here with the dunce cap on. Last, this time last week, we thought we were the smartest people in the world. We thought Donald Trump was an idiot. We thought his campaign made no sense. And it turned out they were smarter than us. And we don't have anything to say to you. Now, you, I can sit here and pretend I know something. Here's what I know. Everybody I know is miserable. Everybody's on these <laughs> Zoom calls. Nobody's got any good ideas. And we're, it's going to take us a while to figure this out. I'm not good at coming here and faking and pretending. Like, I, like no, we got whooped. <laughs> Man, you can have, go to the spa. You need a you need a you need a massage and a cucumber I, water, buddy. You I agree. Have to. And, a, and, a, and a cookie. <laughs> and a cookie. <laughs> That's right. All right. All right. <laughs> How big will Trump win in 2024? It was this big. Yes, Trump by himself have defeated the neocons in the Republican Party, the Democrat Party, and the media all by himself. He destroyed the Bush. He destroyed the Cheneys. He destroyed the Clintons. He destroyed the Obamas. He destroyed the Harris. He destroyed everybody that was against him. The whole establishment thus far. They tried everything to get him. They even tried to pew pew him. It didn't work. Now, I am glad to report that the media has bent the knee. First, Mr. Chris Wallace from CNN, this little piece of shit here, who went from Fox and went to CNN, think it's going to be bigger and better over there. They fired him. I hope you show the scenario because it shows what fake news is all about. Okay, okay go I don't ahead. think I'm fake news, but okay. I will, we'll, put oh, our, you are. we'll put our stats you on. You said we had the worst mortality rate in the world, I and we have the best. The all right, it's a little complicated. Did not renew his contract, so he's going to do a podcast because he think it's going to be better. He think he have a following. He thinks he's Tucker Carlson. Chris Wallace, you're no Tucker Carlson. So you're going to be like a Don Lemon over there. CNN also reported that they're going to start laying people off, hundreds of people off at the network. Yes. Not only that, MSNBC, their ratings have plummeted. And Comcast that owns MSNBC is looking to spin off the channel for a potential sale. These numbers are absolutely brutal, ladies and gentlemen. According to Fox Business host Elizabeth McDonald, MSNBC's viewership was completely collapsed. Even liberals don't like to be lied to. Now here is some of the numbers. Nielsen ratings, which is the guideline for music and TV and movies about how much they're being viewed, listened to, or watched. Ratings plunged at MSNBC since Trump won. Practically every day, practically every show. Morning Joe, down 40%. Morning Joe second hour, down 36%. 7%. Andrea Mitchell, down 39.7%. Ari Melber, down 49.6%. Joy Reid, down 54.6%. All in with Chris Hayes, down 47.2%. Alex Wagner tonight, down 53.6%. Ready for this? Lawrence O'Donnell, down 60.6%. And Stephanie Rule, down 67%. It's so bad that Concast, as Donald Trump calls them, is looking to spin off and away from NBC and its cables for potential sale. Hey, Elon, I have an idea. Buy MSNBC. All because of the Trump effect. Yes. It, it, for sure. I mean, I think all of us have to come to grips with legacy media is just not as important as it thinks it is. So they're going to be downsized. And it seems like Comcast is trying to get rid of MSNBC, Bravo, and the old network. Comcast is set to put MSNBC up for sale. Interesting, right? The news comes as the Comcast president during the company's third quarter earnings call made the announcement. It's also going to possibly include uh, Oprah Winfrey's channel, The Oxygen, as well. So that was quite interesting. Now, if you're wondering why this all probably is happening, it's because they see the writing on the wall, right? MSNBC ratings 
Yeah, they're trying to sell these things off. I don't know who's going to buy that crap because the new media is here. Like Elon Musk said, X is the new media. Yeah, journalism is dead. Like, what the heck is going on? It's bizarre. Yeah, that's why X is the future. Uh, it's, it's, where, it's citizen journalism, where you hear from the people. It's by the people, for the people. That's what it's all about. So Mika from The Morning Joe have said that the right-wing media and the podcast and talk radio has done misinformation, disinformation, et cetera, et cetera. You know, something else we need to look at is how people are turning to social media, podcasts, and other non-traditional sources for their news, and also news stations that aren't news. Yeah. And um, I canvassed in all of the battlegrounds. I was shocked by the amount of misinformation voters were truly repeating back to me. Truly shocked. I do believe this is what caused the collapse of the Democrats nationwide. You cannot win when people believe lies. So your parent company have seen the light, and now they want to do this information also, right? So they want to do podcasts too? I can't wait to see Joe Scarborough with his own podcast. <laughs> Starring Mika. Fuck out of here. He could have undermined the messaging so much that he can actually control right. uh, exactly what people think. And that yeah. is the that is if our you, job. Yeah, if you look at the issues... Uh... You failed, media. You also failed. You've been exposed. You've been taking this for granted. You've been lying to us since Obama years. And now we finally caught up. Thank you, Elon Musk, for buying Twitter. And now it's ex-Twitter. Thank you again, sir, for saving our voice. Saving our freedom of speech. Now we're here. Now we have a new media. Twitter. YouTube and others, Rumble. Now everybody getting their information from fake journalists. Kids in nursery school are learning to discern between fake news and real news. Yeah. They should be teaching that in this country. Yeah. Teach children tolerance, teach them to think critically. Well, it would help if we could regulate social media because one of the biggest defenders is DC and Congress have not been able to do one thing uh -huh. in regard to the well, rogue corporations not gonna social get media. Any better. So it's a new day, man. We're, it's a new day. We're all excited about this. The mainstream media is dead. And Trump, help me out. You're going to win so much, you may even get tired of winning. And you'll say, please, please, it's too much winning. We can't take it anymore. Mr. President, it's too much. And I'll say, no, it isn't. We have to keep winning. We have to win more. We're going to win more. We're going to win so much. Alongside with Mr. Trump, new initiative about the freedom of speech online, this is going to change everything. It's going to change everything. And I know people like Kamala Harris doesn't like that. We will hold social media platforms accountable for the hate infiltrating their platforms because they have a responsibility to help fight against this threat to our democracy. And if you profit off of hate, if you act as a megaphone for misinformation or cyber warfare, if you don't police your platforms, we are going to hold you accountable as a community. People like Hillary Clinton, who also want to shut down freedom of speech, she ain't going to like this either. There should be a lot of things done. Uh, we should be, uh, in my view, repealing something called Section 230, which gave um, you know, platforms on the Internet uh, immunity because they were thought to be just pass-throughs, that they shouldn't be judged for the content that is posted. But we now know that that was an overly simple view, that if the platforms, whether it's Facebook or Twitter X or uh, Instagram or TikTok, whatever they are, if they don't moderate uh, and monitor the content, uh, we lose total control. And we can't forget... Mr. John Kerry, the distinguished John Kerry, he too wanted to shut down social media. And I think the the dislike of and anguish over social media is just growing and growing and growing. Uh, and it's part of our problem, particularly in democracies, 
uh, in terms of building consensus around any issue. It's really hard to govern today. You can't, you know, you know, there's no, the referees we used to have to determine what's a fact and what isn't a fact have kind of, you know, been eviscerated to a certain degree. And um, people go and that people self-select where they go for their news or for their information. And then you just get into a vicious cycle. So it's really, really hard, much harder to build consensus today than at any time in the 45, 50 years I've been involved in this. And, and I, you know, there's a lot of discussion now about how you curb uh, those entities uh, in order to guarantee that you're going to have, you know, some accountability on facts, et cetera. Because, again, they can't control it. They can't control it. They try to control Elon Musk. You had Elon Musk in your pocket until you turn on him. And then he went to the dark side. And he's dark MAGA. Hold on for a second. Elon Musk went dark MAGA. And ever since then, he opened his eyes because he sees that the Democrat Party are nothing but the true fascists. All right. So we're excited over here. I can't wait till we get this guy inaugurated. Protect this man. Let's go.